500 years ago he washed ashore the sole survivor of a shipwreck and upon the skull of the man who killed his dad he said i'm mad i must eradicate piracy injustice and cruelty and all my sons will follow me so evil doers will believe that this man cannot die G'day, this is X-Fan, the Phantom Podcast. Our website is chronicletrainer.com and you can subscribe to our podcast via YouTube or through your favourite podcast apps. Do not forget to give us a rating on your podcast app and tell a mate about us. Tonight, we're doing something a little bit different. You have heard us talk and give our opinions lots and lots. So we've decided to have an open mic podcast. We are opening the floor and allowing fans to have the opportunity to have their say on things phantom. If you're listening to this podcast, it is the recording of the conversation and we hope you enjoy it. If you're wanting, if you're wanting to be a part of the next one, keep an eye on our website and our social media platforms as we are planning on to have several more in 2023. So enjoy. If you have any feedback or you want to agree or disagree with what some of the other fans have to say, make sure you let us know. Okay, guys, we have a bunch of questions. Some are from from us over at Chronicle Chamber. Others are actually also from the publishers and editors over at Phantom Man magazine in Sweden, but also in Fru from Australia as well. So obviously there'll be others who will listen to this with what we're going to be discussing tonight, the open mic, which will become a podcast. Uh, and then they'll probably have opinions on these topics as well. So uh, if you're listening to that and you have your thoughts, leave your comments on YouTube. If you think that Nick is way off the mark, make sure you let him know. Um, or if you think uh, Trevor's just an old forecast and needs to be quiet, make sure you let him know as well on the social media platforms. Um, what we'll quickly do is we're going to quickly just go around. There's only, there's about half a dozen of us. So this will be real quick just to say your name and what country or state you're from. Um, so we'll start off in India because they are spanking us in the cricket. So they do get right of way. Um, I will go with you, Ankit. Just tell us where, who you are, where you're from, and what state, area, and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, hi, I'm Ankit. I'm from India. Uh, I'm based of the state of West Bengal and the city of Kolkata. And I've been a Phantom fan for since my childhood. And I'm really uh, honoured to be part of this. Awesome. Sayuj? Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Sayuj Abir. I am from uh, Assam, uh, the state of Assam of India. It's in the northeast of India. So it is um, uh, kind of the uh, West, West Bengal where Ankita lives. Uh, is the neighboring state of, uh, you know. So yeah, kind of we are neighbors, but we have never met <laughs> physically. So I met him through, you know, like a WhatsApp group, I believe. So yeah, uh, I have been a Phantom fan since, uh, you know, uh, like um, when I was a kid, my father introduced me uh, to the Phantom, and I am still, you know, uh, you know, very young. But uh, I I know uh, I am very excited to be here. But thanks for having me. Awesome. All right. So West is best. So Daniel. Can I run? I'm Daniel. I'm from Perth, West Australia. Um, oh, I'm probably about. On the other side of the river, as opposed to where Jermaine is. So yeah, awesome. Uh, Trevor, you pretended you're a WA boy for a little while, so <laughs> we'll go you next. Um, I was in West Australia from 1986 until 99. Relocated back to my hometown of Melbourne. Um, uh, away from the heat, basically. And I've been a Phantom fan since the mid 70s. It was a little bit of a crack when I was doing real work and earning real money. Um, and happy to be here. Happy to share my views with you about how the real Phantom is, should be respected. I don't know. I like it all. I'm not, I have no filter. Awesome. 
All right. Uh, we saw uh, Brad, who's um, showing his face. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Brad? <laughs> well, my name's Bradley, and I live in Jindera, and I have a small skull cave and uh, a skull throne and the submarine. That's it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Nick? G'day, Nick, uh, from Hobart in Tasmania in Australia, right down south, as far as possible away from Jermaine, which is always pleasant. <laughs> Didn't realise you had a podcast, Jermaine, this is going to be recorded somewhere. <laughs> um, I've been a fan of fans since I was 13, I'm 43 now, so it's actually 30 years, and my first fandom comic I bought was in a small beachside town called Bridport, where my family and I went every summer holidays, and I wanted something to read, so I bought... Phantom through 1063. And I've been a fan since then. I did disappear from collecting the uh, mid 20, mid 20 teens um, because it went to crap basically and then joined back again when the current fruit owners took over. So it's good. Interesting. Good timing. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So for Sayuj and Brad, who have come a little bit late, we've got a bunch of questions, including from uh, Fru and from ourselves as well. So we're just going to fire off some questions. I'm going to be asking certain questions to certain people. Uh, if you, So like, for instance, I'm going to ask Nick the first question. And when someone has a response or something like that, please jump in. Uh, we'll try and keep our questions snappy. I've got, literally, I've got about 20 questions here. We're not going to get through them all. We'll try and keep this uh, to probably about, say, about an hour. Um, if you're not saying anything, if you could just do us a favour and press mute on your, um, on your screen, and then that way those who are talking, uh, we can... We can focus on them. And if you want to say something, please jump in afterwards um, and then we can kind of go from there. So, Nick, so like I said, I've got some questions from Fru. Um, first one I'm going to ask you is, we're going to get straight into it. Should Fru move to colour or are you happy with the mix of black and white? And Brave man asking me first, Jermaine, because I think you know that I'm more than open with my uh, opinions and happy to share. Um, no, I don't think they should. I think they. I would like to see a bit more though. I know, um, especially our friends from India do love their phantom colours, um, as I do. I do like seeing comics, but I think one of the main reasons I like to see black and white is is the, the tradition. Um, that's how they originally started back with the um, original four ones, and as you can see up in the back there, they still had actually originally done, um, still done, and then they coloured post i would like to see a bit more color i think adding some variety in which they do occasionally is really good i just i know they do it when they publish the uh new dailies and sundays um but just a bit more and again i think if they did it to full color the cost would be prohibitive mm. and it also i think it would um alienate too many people especially some of the more traditional uh, collectors of the phantom so i I would just like to see up the colour, maybe a happy medium. So are I'm you thinking bit, maybe half, defense. half, 70, oh, 30? Around that 70. 64? 70, 30, yeah, 25, 75 kind of thing, 25% colour, 75% um, black and white would be a good mix. And I think doing the new stuff in colour is actually probably more important than the old stuff. Recolouring the old stuff, I think, is just maybe trying to placate to a market that doesn't necessarily exist where we're seeing, we should be seeing the new stuff in colour, the new Sundays, dailies, the new stuff. Um, that was seen by the new artists and creators, I think suits the colour more because it's designed for it, where I don't think necessarily the side barriers from the 60s and 70s and the Wilson McCoys and stuff were designed for colour. Awesome. Um, Daniel, I know you've got a bit of an opinion about this. What Have you got anything you want to add to that? Well, I actually agree agree with both of you. I, I think for I've got the mix right, um, printing a small amount of colour um, and keeping the black and white, um, as I really enjoy uh, the art, uh, uh, seeing it in black and white, the, the shadow, the line work, uh, I actually appreciate it more. The colour needs to be done right. If you're going to do colour, it's got to be done right. So, yeah. Cool. Anyone else want to add anything to that? 
What about um, Anchored or Siyaj, where you are from um, uh, India? Would you like to see more free comics? Okay, so uh, I think I agree with you know what both of you said because uh, like uh, I do like color, and I you know when I started uh, reading the Phantom like uh, back in uh, like 2013 when I was introduced uh, by my father. The Indrajal comics, which you probably know, uh, they had it in color and all. But uh, now, when I got introduced to Prue, uh, like a uh, few years ago, I saw like what the black and white artwork is, like how it looks like, and I think I liked it a lot because you know the original art, uh, it 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 you know, gives you an idea about what the original artist wanted it to look like, and plus. Uh, uh, I mean, I enjoy it more. Like it, it looks really great. But uh, the color is fine. And the, it's great. But when I think about like the old stories, where like uh, Cyberi stories or Raymo or McCoy, whatever, those stories were designed to be uh, in like black and white, like you, you people said. Like that's it. I if anyone adds color to it, like in reality, and you probably seen those like. Because some of them were horrible, like well, the worst coloring ever. Like what? Uh, I mean, I mean, I can't describe it. But the other things, like when the new artists do color, uh, they have their own ideas about how it should uh, look like. Like uh, like Angita himself, uh, like uh, and a new artists like Simi Muma and uh, some people who recently colored for uh, uh, Regal, they did something, but. That's not like uh, uh, I uh, now since I'm a big fan of like the original artwork. I've seen the like uh, black and white things. I don't kind of uh, kind of don't like the, uh, adding colors to it. Like other people uh, will probably like it, but I now don't like uh, leave that uh, how it is. And uh, if uh, new stories are colored, no, no problem. But I think the black and white is the original version. And I think it uh, should not be tempered. Okay, so that was what I wanted to say. So personally, for me, uh, since the question was if Fru should give it uh, more color, I think uh, since Fru's maximum sales come from Australia, so we have to take in what the Australian uh, audience wants. So that way, I think yeah, if majority of the Australian fans think that, you know, this is what it should be and how it is, then I have no issues with it. But personally, as a fan who, uh, from India, who gets Fru books, like Fru is like our only source for uh, English phantom and stories, to be very honest. And I would actually want to see them in color because a lot of them were in color. But Fru makes them black and white also. So that is kind of detrimental for me because those were at least, yeah, even if people, you know, like the old 60s Barry uh, stories and all were not meant to be in color, the dailies. Uh, at least the Phantom men were supposed to be in color, but the food doesn't print them in color. So those things, like, I, I think some of them would really, like, uh, I, I think in the color podcast we saw ourselves, there was this story called Red Rain or something like that. Yeah. And, and without color, that story really made no sense. It was printed in black and white. So I think uh, the importance has to be given to the context of the story and everything. Since some, uh, the modern day stories were written with colors in mind and everything, I think they should definitely be printed in colors. As for Barry's stories in color, uh, this is another uh, scenario which I think differs from market to market. Like in India, if we start printing, uh, like, you know, I'm okay with the fact when Hermes does it because Herm, uh, Hermes books are like, archival editions they are exactly like what it should be and everything but for like our standard comic which is like what 40 to 50 pages uh since the tradition of indian comics has been in color it will be a little bit of a backward step for people because irrespective of how bad the coloring was uh, colors were basically like the beginning just like how for australians black and white was the traditional way where the strip was uh, presented Colors was the traditional way that it was presented in India. So, yeah, for through Australian audiences, they've probably got the thing right. But I would still like to see more color, especially with newer stories and the Phantom stories, which they tend to always print in black. 
Mm. So Trevor and Brad, as the elderly or the older um, fans among us, big and old, like we're like and. We joke on this podcast, we call you the old fuddy duddies, the forkers, and, and all this type of stuff. But all jokes aside, you are probably the through readership is mainly in your age demographic. So, are you happy with the current? <laughs> are you happy with the current um, mix of color and black and whites? Would you like to see more? Do you agree with what everyone said already, or disagree? Or after you, Redmond. Well, I'm, I'm happy with the black and white comics, no problems at all, but I do like a bit of colour occasionally. Now, whether that would be in the trade paperbacks, um, I don't mind those, um, but probably probably the, you know, the 75 to 25, if it had to put a number on it, but I don't mind the, I don't mind the black and white. I'm happy to read it in colour as well. As long as we still get a phantom in English in Australia, Bradley will be a happy chappy. <laughs> Very good. Trevor, anything good to add? Or bad. <laughs> I agree with that. That's, it's about right. It's been, I've been lucky to get a, quite a large shrimp of the Shakti and the Regal, and I find the colours in there, both the paper and the production values are excellent, and they're bringing to life quite a few stories that, were, that we got in through in Black and White. But I totally get the the Australian food can't afford all us old farts. We just stop buying it because it's going to be too yep. expensive. But you know, I'm never going to because I'm welded on for life. I mean, I I would love a few more special family stories, especially from the early days, well, middling days, like the seventies and eighties, when Fantasia started to print colour. Yet I'd one of those to be in color. Because if you go back and look at the Wolf series, who recolored uh, their five or six stories, whatever it was, and they did it differently to how Fantoman did it, but they came up beautifully and they really added to the artwork of, of Lindau and, and Avenol and, and the others that were, were there. But it's a balance. It's... it's it's dollars and dollars and cents, and they just can't afford it in the market they're in. And we're very lucky that I hear you want to say that. So, Trevor, you talk about price range there. Would you be willing to pay more for your comic every fortnight? And, mm-hmm. like, are you willing to pay 50 cents more, a dollar more? I'll, I'll pay more, but there's... And I already am effectively because however I'm getting these ones from India, um, they only up costing me, let's say, you know, 10, 20, whatever dollars a, a pop. I hope to actually add it up. Um, it's, it's hard work, but they're nice to have in colour. I'm happy that they've got the balance about right. Uh, I, like I say, I, I'm welded on. I, they're just hanging on by their teeth at news agents. I don't know who's buying the issues from the news agents, but um, I don't know around you, your way, but a lot of news agents are just completely getting out of having any magazines, let alone fandom comics. And so, I, you know, I don't know. I think they've got to keep the price point low so that there's still an attraction to mum to go, oh, or child. To go, I can afford to spend four dollars fifty, not seven dollars fifty every fortnight. Mm. So, is there anyone, anyone here? And we've got another guest, uh, Ta- Talma. So, uh, thank you for joining us. Is there anyone here who thinks that the Fru comics are too expensive as they are, and they wouldn't buy any comics if they increased by fifty cents or a dollar? Is there anyone I'd who... still buy. I'd still buy a few uh, a fru comic. You'd still Every buy edition. a few of them. No, a fru. I'd buy a fru comic if, if it was dearer, because um, I still want one. <laughs> so I don't know what. Oh, well, you know, if they were ten bucks instead of 
whatever that I don't even know what they are now. Three seventy five, is it? Four, four, four twenty with a new pa- new and better paper. Four twenty. Yeah, well if they were twelve bucks, I'd be a little bit disappointed, but I'd probably still buy it. I, I think it's still reasonable value in the scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, so yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I'd still buy it. I'd still buy it to me. No, is anyone out there, anyone wouldn't spend an extra 50 cents or a dollar? I, th- I think, especially for those of us in Australia, Jim, looking, knowing Bradley's collection, Trevor's in the background, Dan's is his collection in the background, your collection in the background, I've got framed artwork. We're probably not the demographic <laughs> yeah. to be asked that question. To. I reckon we're going okay that we could still afford to collect. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. All right. So, um, okay. So I'm not sure if people know this. We'll, we'll stick with the free theme for a little bit because um, there's mainly Australians here. And then I know um, and we'll kind of broaden our range a little bit. Um, Fru have a 75th anniversary coming up. If you were in charge of Fru, if you had, if you had kicked out Renee, kicked out Glenn, and you were now the big bosses telling Dudley what to do, what would you do for the Fru seventy fifth special? And I do want to hear from our Indian brothers as well. Uh, so if you could give us a quick, quick, quick answer, Brad. I see your face first, so you uh, go first. What would you well, like to see for the free seventy fifth? I'd like, like the seventy fifth year. I'd love to see love to see him at Supernova. First off, okay. All right, who's next? Daniel, West is best. Um, I, I'd like to see them put out. I've, I've actually mentioned this to you before, an an all Australian themed comic with Australian uh, creators. Good idea. Or, um, a- and or artists. Um, if the creator is a writer and it's an international writer, it's great. As long as there's an Australian theme to it, being a fru um, annual or a special edition. All news stories? All news stories. The, with, the, with the Phantom visiting Australia or New Zealand? That would be a good one. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd, yeah, that was my idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. I think, uh, I, think uh, the, I think the Phantom already visited Bob Hawke or something back in the day, didn't he? Back in the 90s with the Keith Chaddo, Jim Shepard comic. Yeah. Like... Yep. High time he came, came back again, I reckon. Exactly. Well, it's just um, Julie Walker's just visited New Zealand again. So, um, Nick or Trevor, anything else you want to add? I'll go. What I would not like to see is something like the 1500th episode i mean that's just i mean it's it's, it's just disgraceful i've talked about it enough in the past online i would actually like to see against i agree with dan I was, I, I, you would want a decent special comic i think something like being an australian theme like that would be um fantastic i, I do suspect that actually if they did something that that'd probably too fair go down the cheap path and print something that's been published before which i suppose they are because that way it does save them licensing costs and avoid, and they don't have to go through all their um, checks and balances with King Features because they can just reissue so that's been published. I would actually like to see, and this probably stems into around the 2000s issue as well, is around the supernova time, team up with the charity dinner and actually have a big, what I've done before in the past, a big through kind of celebration dinner, which would raise money for charity, get people in. We know that, that Leo Fork dinner gets... 60 people a year, but you know, have something really big and special around that weekend would be really nice as well. Like, a, you know, big and then tie in with Supernova a bit more as well. Like, yep, yeah, yep. and have a really a good night of it and celebrate. Yeah, and it's, and it's an achievement to keep a company running over many hands of 35 years. So, I think they should celebrate it rightly. So, too, hmm. Trevor, anything to add? I'd like them to sort of double up and have the celebration of Phantom, and I like the idea of the. The Australian links and the history, but I'd also like them to focus or refocus on their place in the middle 50s comic book industry in Australia. Um, you guys that are collectors beyond just the Phantom, and I'm sure you're seeing a lot more with the giant size and reprints of things, but 
They were doing a lot of comics. I could come, um, I know a bit, but not a lot. Well, sorry, yeah, all right, whatever, somewhere in there. Um, and I'm still surprised every now and again I'll see, oh, that was published by Fruit. Or, as is becoming more obvious to me, and maybe everybody else knows it, there are all those little companies that they were cross supporting, licensing to, throwing stuff out to. And I've never quite worked out whether they were owned by Fruit or just, you know, they were sidelined. Anyway. So I'd like them to celebrate that part of it as well, because and not just the Phantom Ranger and our wonderful Sir Falcon, uh, et cetera, et cetera, but all these other titles. And okay, a lot of them were American reprints, but there's a lot of stuff out there that that puts them in the middle of the icons of Australian publishing, which may mean nothing to a lot of people. Awesome. Um Anchor or Serge? Um, Anchor, would you like to add anything? Yeah, so, uh, I was, uh, so personally for me, for Fru, uh, like I, I, since I'm not Australian, I really don't have that much. So I would I would say like if I was in control of Fru and it was like something like that, seven, 75 years, you said, right? Yes. So... I would probably make a collection of like original flu stories, you know, like, like have the very first one there too. And the better ones, which came uh, from 2016 onwards, most of them, because I, I think some of the uh, like little previous original ones were like really weak. So if I'm going to put something like 75 years there, I just put like, you know, show like how uh, the stories have evolved and they would be all original Phantom stories, not nothing to do with like you know, not a Barry story reprint or a McCoy and everything. So everything on that very first that Keith Chato, uh, Jim Shepard, I think uh, like uh, that story too. Like say end it with Duncan's uh, rotten apples or something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Sayoj. Okay, so uh, I think uh, what I would like to see is that, you know, when they do this kind of like special, is that, uh, you know, when I looked at their past envelopes, those didn't uh, like, they had the stories, then they had um, the editorial by Dudley or the, before that they had the editorial by Jim Shepard. But when they started doing this kind of envelope thing again, uh, like you know, that 20, uh, 21 annual, with which I very annual was that, like Antonio Lemos uh, did the cover, but that, that's not a thing. But they had the cyberi stories, but why uh, can't they put an, an, a new interview about him, interview with him, or a, a, a big article about him, or something like inform information? Because we need uh, that kind of information, right? Because yep. like we get there, we do, do uh, get these stories, like. Um, why don't don't you ask the cycle the process behind uh, these stories? What uh, did really he think about these stories when uh, he you know, did it? If he remembers them, of course. But yeah, like that kind of uh, or about even his life or artistic life, uh, about something like you know inform information. And uh, another thing, you you, uh, you said first like if I you know I can command for you like uh, if I can uh, like uh, ask Dudley. I think uh, the first thing I will do is like get a distributor in India and a publisher and printer. Like uh, I, 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 I need the comic in my hands in the Indian price I can buy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would like to, you know, do <laughs> if awesome. I am given the opportunity. All right. And the other thing would be is if I just want to say something, if I was in charge of free, I'll tell, I'll tell Dudley he needs to take some time out. Have a holiday, but also get back on to get onto the Chronicle Chamber uh, podcast as well. So I just thought I'll quickly throw that one in there for you, Dudley. Um, all right, so we, we've touched a little bit on free. Now we're going to kind of swing over a little bit, looking at more of a global type of thing uh, view. So obviously, the exciting news that we have all witnessed and seen so far in 2023 is the video game. Everyone's aware of the new video game that's currently in development, I'm assuming. Yeah, a lot of nodding heads. So <laughs> I, I was just, I just want to know, kind of like 
what's your you know and again we'll try and keep the answers as short and quick as possible is what we is what we have been doing is what are your views of it what are you looking forward to it what what are your concerns like is there something you're worried about um and then you know have, have you liked what you've seen and if is there questions you would like to ask um because uh one of the things we would like to do is maybe get ash uh the director onto a, a participation podcast like this so um, if there's some questions maybe we can um uh, get him on there so we'll we'll start off uh Siaj, you um we'll start off with you again buddy um let us give us a bit of a what you think about the video game and you know what you'd like to see and what you wouldn't like to see well uh you i think you picked the wrong person because you know i know nothing about video games like, <laughs> people will like you know tease me like my friends tease me because i don't play video games like i i'm too busy like collecting comics and like reading stuff so yeah that's the kind of a thing i'm not um, i'm not much aware of but i have like seen some gameplays and like cut scenes i i watch like the dc games whatever like batman arkham those, those games are famous you know so anyways uh so what i would like to see like i'm um, like to see with the game like you know a great uh, you know pre- presentation of the character like a great adaptation like uh, like for the i want the comics to come to life like i want to uh, see my favorite moments with this game like if i am play like um, the, the what the phantom does you know i want to uh, i want the game to have like what i want like that that what is uh, what is the what the phantom is and uh, like uh, i have seen like the what you guys uh, shared like the artwork and it's it's going to going to be completely hand drawn and like this sounds like very interesting you know i think you know they sh- what, what they should do i i know they are trying in into a graphic novel but they uh, should also do kind of like an animated uh, uh like cut scene kind of like movie type thing if uh, you know interactive movie kind of thing like you you and i in, uh, saw in the interview that like uh, they um, they said like every action leads to a different consequence so if you like shoot someone in the head like you kill them phantom does not kill that will uh uh in lead to another thing like uh, very bad thing so uh you probably don't know but uh, in 2020 i believe uh, there was a like animated movie about uh, animated interactive movie so but by dc uh, there was like the batman that in the family that uh, came out like uh, in 2008 uh, called under the red hood so that movie and they turned it it will into a, like an animated movie so you uh, when uh, when batman tries to save jason todd like robin uh, you have two choices with this movie like you, you, in the blu ray version okay so you you tap one uh, like batman saves robin So Batman, Robin is saved, but Batman dies instead. So, uh, like Robin is alive, but he is like swearing for vengeance because mm. Batman is dead, and like he kills Joker and all. Like uh, it's the same thing is as the Red Hood story, but it's um, very different because he becomes like harsh or something. And then another option is they are like, uh, um, who, um, Jason dies or Robin dies, so Robin dies, and then uh, and there are another option about. Uh, both leads so mm. that is that leads to a different consequence so they should turn in into a like animated form because they are doing the same thing with like the movie so uh, if someone who does not play video games i think everyone does but yeah for someone like me because i don't know how to play video games so uh, and they should turn it to it into like an in, a, in a, like a interactive animated movie yeah an adaptation if you will i i i i I don't know anything if they can do that or I, I'm just looking forward to it and that's uh, that are my thoughts okay are there any um anyone here who do play video games uh, yeah so uh, one of the things like I I went to the podcast and everything like uh, Sue has uh, good ideas about it but like that is more of uh, what he's talking about when he's uh, in the arc and all of that they are a very high budget triple a Hmm. games and uh, and if you look at 
what you know in that podcast you could understand like the budget isn't really that great like so they were also like the asset creation and all of that that is going to lead to it that is why it's a beat em up game to be very honest because you can reuse a lot of assets to uh, uh, you know put in the game so from what we realize like i realized from the interview is that they were working on a very uh, limited budget and trying to make the most out of it by efficiently using whatever asset music sound like little thing and and put it in the narrative so i personally think if uh, in a game in games like this which are side scroller beat em ups with stories like i think the benchmark is a game like something like mark of the ninja where uh, there are no in, like cut scenes per se but uh, it was very simply done with dialogue boxes but uh, which made it look like a comic but it was uh, it saved money in terms of animation but it also had a very fluid it had to had to have a very unique look mark of the ninja was based on feudal japan and all so that art so phantom has its own and i think anthony space doing it. so i personally would just like to see like a uh, very good optimization with the story content because beat em ups are like you know usually it becomes a button mashing thing uh i i wanted to have a lot a little bit more than just but mashing something you know which would uh, like a little unique experience in terms of just like not clearing a level by beating everyone up and uh, then beating the final boss and that's it awesome um anyone else plays video games yeah, anyone interesting i i haven't done any of the uh, searching of things you posted about it for your game and stuff so i don't know how they're approaching it but it's um difficult fitting in the non-violent part of the fantasy story into a video game with generally the format is shoot them and they die so i'm looking forward to see how they negotiate that um i hope that there's a certain level of um uh, intuitive cleverness problem solving but that's probably me as well because I'm more of a side scroller than a than a first person shooter. So, and I'd love to see different levels approach different art styles of the of the classic styling, but then also a modern standalone. This is done for the for the um, computer game. I will work with and hope. And I'll buy it. So put me down if there's a Kickstarter. I'll be in there. So Trevor, I want to know as, and this will be a question for um, uh, for Brad as well. As guys who have to buy two or three of everything, will you be buying the game? <laughs> um, yeah, I think you accidentally on uh, pinned when you did that one. <laughs> so everyone who's watching YouTube would have seen that one. Um, will you be buying the game on every platform? So will you be buying like the physical game on Xbox, the physical game on the PlayStation, the physical game on the Nintendo DS? Will you be doing that or, or, or will you just be buying like the one? No, no, I won't be. <laughs> uh, you will be. <laughs> I, I would probably get... My platform of choice at the moment is the uh, Nintendo Switch. Um, so I'd go with probably whatever. I don't, yeah. I'd, I'd accumulate them on the other platforms. I wouldn't be first launch, if that makes sense. So I'd launch with whatever platform I can play it on and then accumulate them as, as time goes forward. Now, much in the same way as don't you have ev- all four or five, I might even be up to six, different Australian DVD releases? Yeah. I don't know. I might be wrong. And Is then you get them, and then you get them in the other languages and other countries as well. <laughs> but that, that's one of the things, I germ is well, I don't play games often these days, and I'll, I'll probably have a gander at it if it's half decent. Is will it become a physical game? Yeah, the plan is that's, that it will be a physical game. So that's an odd. There's semi, there's semi this odd be- 
there's this great website called Chronicle Chamber who do this wonderful thing <laughs> called a podcast, um, Nick. And I actually into interviewed... Um, <laughs> I honestly think it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a... I, I, I can partly say the reason why, because you can mail it, you can be physically seen, but it does add production costs, etc. This is yeah. pluses and minuses. And owning media, that's why. So I just say these up here. I think that when the key with this is it's... It, it's actually got the chance to bring potentially a lot of people back to the Phantom and, and, and new people. It's got to be really well price pointed. So I don't think it's going to be like, I shouldn't, I hope it's not a premium 80, 90, $100 game, which some of them are. It needs to be that lower end. Um, and it needs to be, it doesn't need to be the greatest game of all time, but it can't be shit at the same time. It's got to find that, at least that half decent. You know, it's worth 40 bucks, 50 bucks point. Yeah. Yeah, and so the base game is that obviously it's cheaper if you download it, but then you can buy the physical game from your EB Games, your JB Hi-Fi if you're in Australia. Um, they've also got the, again, in the podcast, um, they talk about how they've got the distribution for the big US, big USA distributors as well. Um, one of the interesting things was the he made mention of the figurines from NECA, the first Apparently there was, I can't remember, I think it was 50,000 copies of that were sold um, and a lot of them in America, so that's a fairly high number. I think it was 50,000 or it might have even been more, but um, again, on the podcast. Um, so, that's, and then... So, sorry, Jen, but when you say 50,000, yes, to that is a large number to us. Yeah. But when you're talking America with a population of th- roughly 320 million, I think, at the moment, and, and how many size and how big Walmart are and stuff, 50,000 yeah, is but, nothing. Uh, are you sure about the 50,000? It's, it's, it's a large number. I well, it's not really a large number. It's just in yeah. comparison to other stuff, it is, it's a drop in the ocean, really. I'll have to re-listen to that podcast, but it was a fairly, it was a fairly large number. Um, but... I think I think they actually what I do remember I can't remember the exact number so I'm hopefully I'm wrong and it was more but they actually had to re recast it reprint it recreate it or like I know if it's a comic you would reprint it whatever that equivalent of a, of a figurine is um, so you make a good point there um, Nick about um, trying to get older fans. How it could be a good re-jumping on point for um, fans that have stopped collecting the comic or stopped reading the comic or whether it's from you know maybe you know when their kids are getting uh, JB Hi-Fi or EB Games or something like that and they see the Phantom and they're going oh the Phantom I remember buying that as a child or when I was younger or my dad read it or my grandfather read it so. Uh, Interested in some of your thoughts. Do you think that that this video game, does anyone else think that this video game has a good potential to be able to be a good re-jumping on point for uh, older fans that have fallen away? Brad? I, oh, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not a gamer, mate. So, um, But I, I was surprised when we did the exhibition in 2014 and we... We searched around with the help of Joe and got a uh, an old Sega game, and we played that from the eighties. My son, who was who was a gamer, um, was actually quietly impressed because I got him to play it because I couldn't, and um, to see how the game actually played because um, the I think three of the games I had didn't, but he was he was pleasantly surprised with the old game. So you might get you might get a few of the other gamers. That might jump on just because it's a it's an unknown game to them. So hopefully, but I, see as much try as I might, I can't get my boy to read a fan comic. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> uh, Anchor, I think you were going to say something. Really, uh, I think this is a very tricky situation. Because this is what happens when you make uh, games on an existing uh, license. You know, like. Say uh, the most successful games in this uh, genre of beat em ups is uh, games like I, I, some of you might have played it as a child called Streets of Rage and all of them. Have you played Streets of Rage, any of you? Okay. 
so like i i remember playing it when i was like yeah seven eight years old so yeah so those games like you know the problem is like since uh, I, like even street fighter now it's a big name so like those games became ips like so comics flew out of them but when you have an existing character and you adopt it for a video game it gets very tricky and like till before about uh, batman arkham even uh, big big characters could not even now right now they did an avengers game it wasn't well received so that is the problem because you're coming from an already existing fan base who have a very so uh, notion of what the character is going to be like it's something like uh, you guys are fans of the phantom right in a beat em up game there is practically nothing more than phantom just punching 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 and you go till the next stage so it it is going to be a little difficult i think that way for uh, the game to bring uh, it, it only if anything i think it is it is going to probably introduce the character to a lot of people who just play games who is going, who is just going to pick this game up as like what is the phantom and then i don't think the older people are going to get in but maybe it could be a gateway for younger people to get into the actual character if it's done well like you know if its presentation and everything and all of that is right um anyone else want to add anything no i i just going to say the germ i i don't think it's going to necessarily bring people back into the fold but there's definitely a big potential for it to reach a new audience um and and you know you you we on the podcast you mentioned quite a fair bit what what you need to bring more people in the fold this is definitely a stepping stone that the character does need to go mainstream um in terms of concerns i i don't think there's any concerns that i've seen with the development the creator says really switched on is a is a fan he understands the character they've got a very good artist in Anthony Spay um and Matt Matt Com who's contributing as well who understands the the character and will s- stick to the to the lore of the character as well so yeah it's 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 in good hands so daniel will do you play video games i'm i'm not a gamer but as a result of this game coming out i reckon i'll buy a console <laughs> <laughs> and all the packs that come with it <laughs> um so, i know you've yeah. got nieces and nephews that you were trying to um uh get addicted to the phantom like like their favorite uncle uh do yeah. they play do they play any consoles um one a couple of the teenagers do the younger ones not yet um so yeah so will oh, you be oh, buying them a game for christmas definitely yeah 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 christmas birthdays definitely yeah all right all right so you make you you, you just said something about um creating new fans now again you guys are now in charge of free anchor crg user in charge of regal and shaki individually you own you can choose which one you want to be a part of now these are the owners of of the comic that publishes the comic in your home country how what's your strategy to get new fans hooked to as what callum would say the purple crack or the blue crack if you're living in uh scandinavia um so nick i haven't heard from you for a little while and i'm hoping you've had a couple of whiskies in the meantime So you Nick are now the owner of Fru what are you going to do to get some new fans hooked uh, on the phantom I th- think people have said this before is their marketing is just shit ass um and I know it costs money to market but you've got to do it the regular newsletters are a a great start need to trim them down a bit they're not I think the last one had almost every product on the known to mankind in it, but it's a start. They're doing that really well, and no doubt they're getting sales. Um, then the and they tried this and it failed miserably. Is actually using social media, and we know we joke about like, oh, they found the key, the passwords of Facebook account. It's not hard. They're, they're producing twenty six regular comics. They're producing the giant four giant size. They're releasing some really good stuff at the moment. The content is actually there to put out there and push and you can link your facebook to your instagram and your twitter and stuff and push it out and have your regular um 
marketing pushes there and that's where you get your engagement and you ask it about the covers and all that kind of stuff that would be the main thing i would do is actually get the marketing done properly so that'll and be interact your, that'll be your first yeah. thing you do oh totally yep no it's, it's easy wins low hanging fruit to using a term i hate using when i'm in in, my, in business <laughs> at work. Oh, i love that saying <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll fly over to India. Uh, Serge, in two minutes, what would you do if you were the new owners of Regal? Okay, so if I'm the owner of like Regal and Shop Team or whatever, oh, you only get so, one, uh, you only get one. I okay, think well, the well, other one. I, either of them, <laughs> either of them. Uh, so what I would do, like what they're doing, I, I do like how they are like, uh, like in, they, you see a guy like his name is Bishwadi Purakas and he posts uh, like whatever like uh, Shakti posts every in every single like Facebook uh, phantom group or like you know related to comics like whatever Shakti posts whatever uh, they uh, publish uh, he like uh, whatever like posts uh, like Shakti when you know they market like their stuff like new stuff is getting released uh, look at it like then the new covers they like posted uh, yesterday i believe so like that kind of like, i like that kind of marketing but it is not like the way to reach more people because uh, even though the comics groups are do have people but they are like, like the old people they are not the new ones they use like the uh, social media like instagram and like uh, you know, the twitter some people do but instagram is like most popular i believe and like, they are Shakti like does not have um, much present in Instagram or like that kind of social media uh, or sure, legal, legal, of course. Like even if they post like, okay, they post occasionally and, and that does not do anything. Like if you post occasionally or like market occasionally in those popular platforms, you know, what will it uh, you know, do to impact your sales? Like, okay. And- so, so. We'll do a bit of social media. Um, would you do anything else? Uh, would you hire any different artists? Sorry, Anka, you're getting the flick now. Um, <laughs> would you yeah, would you create your I, I own think... content? Would you republish Phantom End stories or or uh, Moonstone stories or? Yes, uh, I think you know. I, I like what I like about Crew is that you know there are variety of content like they. Try to please everyone. Like uh, you know, you, new readers. Okay, we are giving you new stories. Then the Phantom Man ones. Those are new stories as well. Or they uh, print like the old Phantom Man stories again that they published before. And plus yeah. the um, like Fox stories, uh, newspaper stories, whatever. So uh, that kind of mix uh, is needed if you uh, kind of do this kind of like serialized magazine type format uh, for a Phantom comics in India. But, you know, the, the sales are not going any, like, they are not going well. Like, nothing is, uh, like, if you, like, um, put, like, cyber stories, like, Regal does this, the sales didn't increase. But they are, like, printing and printing and printing. It's like a long-term investment, but uh, which, like, minimum, like, literally minimum returns. That's not, like, successful. You have to, like... Like, that's the thing. Like you have to like uh, uh, reach more people, but to reach more people, uh, you need to sort of uh, uh, to put out uh, what they like. Plus, uh, you uh, need to ask them what they want. Like uh, okay. you know, uh, something like uh, the crew is doing with the uh, newsletters. I uh, when I get like some crews, like latest ones. Uh, from last year, I got some uh, of them. Uh, I, I like the letters when they kind of uh, should do this kind of like newsletter things if it's possible, or even like, you know, social media suggestions, like uh, do a poll, Instagram poll or uh, Facebook poll, whatever things. It's like, do, do, be tech savvy, be uh, like uh, in the 21st century, this is not like the uh, not like the 20th century where the Indrizal comics or Diamond comics were. This is very different. This is a new time. And plus, one thing, uh, the price is actually a factor. 
because uh, you know i i i uh, i've heard a lot of people saying that you know the price is like getting much bigger it, it is actually getting bigger like it is getting uh, somewhat expensive but you know the, for the sake of quality like fans like me or somebody else will buy it but but there is a catch like somebody will not buy it they will yeah. like literally spend money on like, like the old comics and um, buy that because that is uh, for them so now if you want to uh, like do that you need to uh, appeal to them like change the structure of price like do kind of lower quality products but but that will uh, help you kind of uh, you know, right. to get sales and like that. Cool. Okay. No worries. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, Trevor, I know you could probably afford to buy through. So if you were buying through, how would you get some new fans hooked on the Phantom? Or if you buy it off uh, King Features? I, I don't know. I find it really personally a marketing dilemma of how you attract new people. I, I think they've given a really good track. I do think that their, their social media is a bit poor and they could work a lot harder on that. Um, so I'd be going down that path. You've got to have more of a presence. You've got to communicate better with the comic stores. You've got to have a better relationship. I know that the, my friends that run or my local comic store um, are fairly loyal but they're a bit fed up with just the poor service they get from from through um from time to time and they try to support it they, they like having the same like and they have enough old generation customers coming in just to get the fandom who aren't you know they get things from me uh yeah anyway. so yeah. i thought i yeah, it's really hard. I, I, I think I'm a generation out now. I don't get the new world. I, uh, maybe, maybe you've got to have as silly as a sound. You've got to have every new edition, a TikTok video. You've got to have something like that. You've got to have Glenn and maybe not Rene, but <laughs> <laughs> or whoever the new artists are or, you know, a Jeremy McPherson or Whoever's doing the covers, Jamie and all that sort of, if they've done a new cover, they've got to do a TikTok video. Go, Look at this, Julie Dent's doing stuff. Got, got to get them out there. Because at least if I put the message out there, someone might see it. I don't. I mean, yeah. I, so, I, so Trevor, we were, we were, we were. We were wanting Duncan to be our phantom to do some uh, phantom TikTok videos. Um, you seem to know a lot about TikTok there. So are you putting up your hand to um, do some TikTok videos for Chronicle Chamber? I have no idea what TikTok is. I don't have it on my platform. I, am not, I do not want to go down that path. I want my partner to start TikToking and just sucks even more time out of her day. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Had it, like, I tried it with Kid Family, and it, I won't say failed. I, like, I quite liked it, but you still didn't get it into the hands of kids. You didn't. How do you do it? I don't know. You've got to, you've got to be in live. You've got to be at. You've got to somehow have through at every comics event. Not and not trying to make money. Trading on their long-standing relationships with with Daniel and the various people from Supernova and Comic Con, whatever. And having so giving away free comic books like the old um uh the old show bags. Yep. Just and have not you know Glenn and Renee and people don't have to come, but you invite the artists in the state to be on the store for an hour a day. Or whatever. And if it's in Melbourne you get me and you get Bradley down and you get more man to bloody thing. If it's W O, you guys go man. But you have a presence there. So so that you've got something in the front of people going, here, buy buy this comic. 
Look, oh, now you're showing off. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to be in libraries, handing them out. You've got to talk to all us old farts that got collections of second-hand ones that are worth fuck all of nothing. Sorry. Uh, worth, because they are, our, our second-hand copies above 700. Yeah. Um, we've got to be, we have got to give them to libraries. We've got to get the message out there. Put them in kids' hands and say, read this bloody thing, it's done. Because if we don't, no one will buy my collection. <laughs> this is this is getting really dangerous. It's um reminding me uh Trevor's gonna drive around in a uh, in a in a van now handing out saying, Oh, do you want some, do you want do you want some comics? Do you want some comics? <laughs> That's pretty scary. And I've got a fan suit. I could do it, I could do it, it wouldn't be clean. <laughs> so Brad. now uh, uh, very good. I, I love some of those ideas, especially with the libraries and, and, and stuff like that. Brad, anything to add? And I know for um, a fact I Joyful think, will not I let you buy through. I know. Um, now, um, I think the distribution of the comics been a bit of a hassle for many, many years. They've got no real say in how many and where to. I think they just, um, if, unless that's changed, I believe that's been a problem for some time. Um, but um, as far as spreading the word without sounding too religious, Jermaine, um, we've actually we got asked by it now. Joyful's here, come here, Joy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got asked by the Judy, what was her name? Uh, Julie, 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 Julie Dietrich, Julie Dietrich, um. Who who uh, does some a volunteer, was part of a voluntary organisation for books in schools, and um, we books don't. In homes. Oh, sorry, books in homes. But we actually have twice now gone to um, Hume Public School and the um, St John's here in Jindera and had a bit of a chat about the Phantom and shown them you know different things and told them about how how comics have got us into another family, a fantastic family. Um, with a PH, and, of course. And with a PH, of course, mate, exactly. Um, so we've done our little bit. Um, I, I would have loved, for example, um, and I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Kid Phantom, um, I would have loved um, the number one issue get sent to every school and just say, look what we're doing, and then start from the, every primary school at least, you know. Yeah. And that would have been something they perhaps could have done. Um, we've handed out the the trade paperback to those two schools, for example. I've bought it, well, we've bought it, and we've given it, given it to the school. To so put in their library. Yeah, to put it in their library. Yeah. So they can do that. So And some of the kids said, yes, they were going to read it. So yes. that's so. where we've got to start. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, a, that was just something that we could do. But I, uh, I know distribution was a hassle um, and... Look, nowadays you've got you've got to be on Bookface, you've got to be on Twitter, you've got to be on all those things, and and um, and they've just got to make time to do that, I guess, as as part of the mm. promotion nowadays. I love I love the fact that a lot of you guys have talked about what we can do just as fans, even if we're not in charge of Fru or or Regal or Shaki is is this is what we can do, you know, instead of Instead of the doubles being sucked up into a phantom collection that's, um, you know, a box because we've got three or four or ten of those copies already is, you know, can we give them to, um, you know, like, uh, what do you call it, um, charities? Can you, yeah, yeah, you know, libraries. Can you give it to, um, you know, like there's, there's plenty of charities to do. Like a good idea is... Um, you know, with domestic violence and stuff like that, there's always people that need, you know, stuff to be given to those families that are in refuge and, and, and hiding and all that. Why can't they have a bunch of phantom comics? You know, they're not doing they're not doing any any good sitting in our collection when we've got 20 copies of that already. Wouldn't so, agree more. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, that's it's very good. I it's probably the best thing that I've loved about this podcast is some um is uh, some practical examples that that you've given, which all of us 
uh, can do as well. So, um, yeah. And so one one more thing, Jim, is that one one dinner, um, a lot of the lot of the the um, people coming to dinner bought a few spare comics, and I think we had like a, a three or four inches of high of comics to give to the bunker, which is the library at Westmead Children's Hospital, so yes. the kids could start having to read a fan them while they're spending the day or or a week or two in hospital. Yeah, while well, they're getting some um, uh, chemo and stuff like that. You know, so yeah, yeah so there, there's some great Whatever. ideas. Um, Serge, did you put up your hand? Did I see that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, so one more thing I would like to add after hearing all of you thoughts. So uh, as a fan, uh, what uh, it is, um, I will uh, talk about that, but before that, I would like to talk about one thing is that the distribution of the comics itself like uh, it, uh, before that when the you know the Indrajal comics or the diamond comics were there like they they used to be with the like like the news agents like they would deliver your paper in the morning with that the comics would also come in uh, and then uh, some uh, like uh, roadside shops or bookshops and they have like uh, all the shops like they have a phantom comics or Indrajal comics like so you, you go there like some people who can, couldn't afford it at the time like my uh, father told me like they would go to the shop and read the comics you know, like and they, they couldn't afford it but they would just read it because they had the first part with them but the second part like it's there but no i don't have that money but <laughs> i will just read them and tell my friends about like what happened in the second part and then you trade comics with your friends like and he has the other issue you have the one like you trade that i will read this part and then that so it, that kind of thing uh, used to uh, happen like in, at that time but now like when these uh, people like uh, regal or shakti pub started publishing the comics they does not have any uh, like distribution things like um, in my locality like nobody knows about like uh, new comics is being published like Hey, uh, I also told you about like the new magazine that in Assam, like that's publishing the comics in the, the Golki stories. So uh, they uh, they also didn't know the editor uh, didn't know about like new comics is being published. He had heard that like Regal uh, did some comics, but they stopped. Like, but he had no idea that the comics were still going on. And like that, I, I asked some um, many older fans in here, like Assam in my state, and they have uh, had no idea either. But when I told them, they said, okay. Uh, then the price uh, thing came up. Like they said, I will stick to my old things. Uh, these are too pricey, kind of like that. Uh, but that's not what it is. Uh, that's what I uh, wanted to uh, tell, like about the distribution. Now, as a fan, like what uh, you know, a, a, a person um, joined uh, the meeting. Talha, I mean, you saw him. Like he left. I told him to join, but he he is actually uh, like making some like uh, edits and like these social media things. Like new generation does what like you know some um, music videos with like some verses and and some some videos like that that that, that appeals to the audience like. And they do which, uh, uh, which like the other character DC, Marvel, etc. Like if you if if you like uh, open YouTube and like scroll through the shorts, you 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 will see like this kind of comic book related kind of short videos. Like he is doing with the Phantom, and he used to do uh, do it uh, with a channel called like King Comics Rises, something like that. Uh, anyway, so he did that kind of thing. Like a fan is like uh, coming out in India and. He's like uh, doing videos and stuff like that to promote the character. And that's a very good thing. I, I think, you know, uh, so some of us who uh, who can do, like I am trying to do, I'm trying to spread the word of mouth to my friends. And like some, some of them were interested, of course. They were like, uh, but then I, I uh, showed them the comics and all, uh, but they were booked up, but they couldn't like, by that, but the, and I, uh, I am proud that I actually, you know, increased the number of fans like around me. Then he, and then he tells me he, he also did uh, with his friends, I believe. 
So that's why kinosis. As a young generation, you can spread to other people, like I, I, the older people. I, I, I just like I told you that and I told them about the new comics that published. I don't know if they got them or not, but yeah, just like you know, just letting them know that, that new stuff is coming out, and yeah, so yes, awareness. That's something, and also distribution. Awesome. So that's what it is. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, we are going to wrap it up. If anyone's got anything that they want to quickly say or anything they want to add to any of the, the five questions, we've only gone through five questions. Um, if anyone's got anything they want to add, uh, please, this is your chance now. Otherwise, we will uh, start wind it up. Uh, Brad, I see you sticking up your hand. Got him all fired <laughs> I'm supposed up. To push some button, I'm guessing, Jermaine, but I don't know how to do that. So just pretend I'm, I'm just, in school. I'm just glad that you actually managed to get onto Zoom. Um, <laughs> well, so am I, but that's joyful again for me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people wouldn't know this, but when we, we actually interviewed you in episode six. Now, this is a little peek behind the curtain, which I don't think many people would know about. It took us took us half an hour to get connected. And then you had some family members over because you forgot to tell them that you had already booked out the time. So then we were on hold, me and Joe were on hold for another hour and a half. And then we actually got around to doing the, the podcast. Surely we wouldn't have made you, someone as important as you, wait an hour and a half. <laughs> well, that was episode six. So we probably, you probably didn't think we were as important back then. But um, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I like you plug the CC at every opportunity. Um, I just want to plug the um, Phantom uh, Club dinner coming up in June. Yes. The Supernova, of course. And um, uh, Peter Stevens has already sent in pictures of a heap of stuff he bought back from the US and is donating himself. So, um, probably what a raise, money. Uh, you want to raise money? I, oh, I don't think no, Peter is donating himself will raise anything. No, no. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> He's donated many items and some <laughs> very, very nice stuff. Nice. So um, uh, so just a little reminder that um, we've, we're a bit tight for time. So if anyone is thinking of donating some, some stuff for the for fan um, club dinner, if they can send us a, a, a picture or two and a bit of description, um, sooner than later, that would be just wonderful. All right. And if you listen to this podcast and you can't get a hold of Brad or you're not friends with him on Facebook, uh, contact us at chroniclechamber at gmail.com and I can pass your, I can pass Brad's uh, email address to you as well. So uh, thank you for, for, for making mention of that. Um, anyone else got anything they want to quickly say yeah. or anything that they want to add to? I just want to say, if anybody has uh, flu 1605, please let me know. I, that is one issue that I'm lacking. What is it? But 1065. 1605. It's a Hans Linda. Yeah. 1605. Oh, 1605. Oh, track it down. Another thing I would like to add <laughs> is, like, uh, I would like to see, I would like to get more trade paperbacks from flu because, to be honest, that was my uh, jumping yep. on point to come back to Phantom because... For me, I've always liked color. I've always liked big, thick books. And the trade paperbacks were ideal for a person like me to, you know, get back. Because also, like, right now, when you buy, say, a DC Marvel character, they also come out in trade paperbacks. So it, it just sits where that, like, that was, the food trade paperback was my inspiration when I worked on the Chatu Saga trade paperback. So that 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 is the whole point. I would really like Fu to at least put out two trade paperbacks a year because yeah, that's uh, I think that is one way to really go and bring out a lot of fans because those books are the ones which can sit on the same shelf as a Batman, Superman, or a Spider Man. Those you know on the same book, so that mm. that's important and not in make the Phantom look like a whatever a B grader yeah. in front. Of the yeah. Very good, very good. But I've said it on the podcast. I would prefer to see free go down to one regular comic a month if they could do two to three graphic novels or trade paperbacks um because I, you know, I reckon they'll also do better in comic book shops as well 
uh, another thing i wanted to point out is a lot of people have been saying about you know making news stories and all on phantom and why in india uh, you nobody is printing scandinavian stories and also i will uh, the licensing for phantom like this is for king features uh, india's uh, currency is much weaker than uh, australia europe any of them so even if there is a market which they always look at looking at india's population like wow a billion people and more there should be so much sales and everything it doesn't happen because of the pricing uh, it's a very price sensitive market and if you are so uh, like right now even uh, licensing a few stories literally impossible for uh, shakti or regal so a phantomen is even beyond that because so unless kfs or phantomen and fru think in terms of uh, of the currency exchange uh, difference because where india can't pay you per story royalty at a higher rate uh, they can definitely make it up with the volume of stories that they take from you so that is the thing so these are things i would want other publishers to be aware of those who are trying to get into the indian market that the indian market is simply very price sensitive and uh, and our currency is much much weaker so uh, so that, that so so that's the thing so if you want the new story and you want to penetrate this market you will have to uh, also relax a lot of licensing and royalty agreements because i would love to actually uh, get some of the fru stories reprinted and recolored and printed here in recolor because that's been a plan for a long time for me but yeah that's about it no worries thank you uh daniel anything you want to add trevor anything you want to add no no worries well thank you um thank you for joining us everyone um we we are planning on doing some more of these in 2023 so if you're listening to this and you thought oh that looks like fun or oh, i agree with with anchor don't agree with daniel uh, or you know nick you know nick's on the money or or, or something like that and you want to kind of have your chance to have an open mic uh we will be planning on doing a couple more of these like i said we've got another 15 questions that we haven't even we haven't even got through So we will do another one of these in a month or so and we're going to try and get uh Ash the director of Art of Play Games on for one to do one solely on the video game as well. Keep an eye on our social media platforms and you will be able to um find out about that. Thank you fans for joining us. We had there was a good six of us and even with only getting through five questions it still looked to be a good hour long discussion. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh having a, the people that participated I hope you enjoyed having a platform to give your opinions to other fans and the fans who are listening to this we hope that you enjoyed it now I'm sure the other fans that had listening that were listening to this you've probably got opinions on what was said so please let us know your thoughts whether you're on YouTube in the comments section or you can have a listen to us on our or you can listen to us on audio or you can give your opinions also on the social media platform or you can email us if you prefer at chroniclechamber@gmail.com our website is chroniclechamber.com now if you want to be notified of new articles that is the place to go now patreons patreons always get first dibs of participation podcasts um so make sure you join up Patreons also get early access to podcast, extra podcast videos, and they also get access to sneak peeks of the new Phantom video game and anything else that we can share. So, if you want to join up and you want to get early access, now is the time to sign up and help us. Patreon, you may be wondering, what is it? Where does the money go? And basically the money goes to pay for all our bills running of this website. Yes. money that is left over at the end of the year or the end of every 6 months when all the bills have been paid it goes into merchandise like wristbands uh, study holders and stuff like that and all our patreons get free swag of that stuff so hey 
Even if you only join us for the free swag, it is worth doing. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed listening to some other fans' opinions. Like I said, we will be doing uh, these again in 2023. Hopefully you can join us in one of those. Until next time, thank you, stay safe, and happy fans. Bye.